स्थापकाय धर्म से सर्वधर्मस्वरूपिणे अवतार वरिष्ठा रामकृष्णा दे नम The Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna Master asked the Narain and others to go and meditate in Panchavati. Go to the Panchavati and meditate there under the banyan tree. Shall I give you something to sit on? About half past ten, Narendra and his Brahmo Brahmo friends were meditating in Panchavati. After a while, Sri Ram Krishna came down, came to them. M two was present. He asked them to go and meditate, and. there is a purpose he wants all the these disciples specially trained for a mission of dharma samsthapana it is on one side the ancient vedic culture has to be presented back to the world where it is total comprehensive aspect of spirituality of which each religion represents a part and here we see in the vedic religion it is total of all aspects of god in whatever way man can understand comprehend realize experience god so god can be experienced in five ways as a transcendental reality which is beyond the creation in which the whole creation appears and disappears like a speck in the deluge huge like limitless expanse of existence in this the universe appears and disappears small speck in a huge limitless time limitless space that is eternal and infinite in eternal and infinite the time and space bound small universe appears as a transcendental reality the same has become the power of it chichakti has become the universe we can realize the universe as god the whole universe itself vishwarupa as the immanent aspect of god the transcendental aspect of god the immanent aspect of god god pervading the universe and governing it the pervasion as the substratum and pervasion when we use the term substratum we must clearly understand it is substratum of the whole universe and every particle of it however small atomic and still smaller you go you see the same substratum pervading it and it has that has become this as if except name and form nothing else is there suppose to clearly understand the substratum aspect of the immanent aspect of god suppose there is a wave in the ocean you can see number of waves suppose waves you consider as one one universe in the ocean then innumerable waves are there suppose the waves are within the ocean the 
there is nothing else other than the ocean and inside the ocean there are waves. The wave, suppose there is a wave, whatever way you consider a wave, a wave contains only water, ocean has become a wave and wave does not contain anything other than, but it is you can see distinct from the ocean. Wave you can see distinct from the ocean, but every particle of the wave is ocean itself, except ocean nothing is there. The whole wave that comes up is just water of the ocean, every bit of it and water pervades that ocean. Water has become the ocean. This is immanent aspect. It has taken a name and form. It has taken a form. Ocean is formless. However deeper you go, when we say infinite and eternal ocean, you will see there is no limits, there is no limitations of the, but a wave has a form. So, when you say wave, it is a form except for name, form and action, nama, rupa, kriya. That is the only thing. If you remove the name, form and action, it is ocean only. That is a ocean has become the substratum of wave, we say. In wave, there is water and water alone. Water has become wave. And what is the substratum of that wave? Why do we differentiate? Because you can see it distinct from the ocean. And why do you feel the distinction? Because there is name, form and action. Name and form, in this universe, if you remove the name, form and action, it is God. So, this universe has God. It has taken the name, the same ocean that are transcendental has become the immanent like a wave, wave appearing in the ocean. So, this immanent aspect of God, you can realize God as a transcendental, as immanent and the same water which is pervading the universe is governing it also as the Ishvara, the Lord of the universe. The governing aspect of the, how the wave will move, how it will, how long it will stay, how it will must submerge again back in the ocean and again raise. How does it move? The wave moves. Everything is decided by the forces working in it. So, the power which is making the wave exist and move about and act and dissolve, appear and disappear, all that is governed by the pervading water itself. So, the consciousness that Chaitanya that pervades the universe and governs it. I am there, I am a Jivatman. Jivatman is the individual consciousness pervading this body. They so say, when I sleep, I withdraw my individual consciousness. Body sleeps off. And like that, whole universe is pervaded by consciousness. The consciousness that pervades the whole universe is called Ishvara. Individual body and cosmic body. Now, individual body called microcosm, macrocosm. Vyashti, Samashti. Vyashti Chaitanya and Samashti Chaitanya. Samashti Chaitanya is expressing through all bodies as the Vyashti Chaitanya. Each body, the same cosmic conscious, hundreds of pots are there in this room. The room space is pervading all the parts as a part space. Like that universe, the universal consciousness is appearing in all bodies as the individual consciousness, Jivatman. Some total of all Jivatman is Ishvara. The space occupied by all parts and the covered by all parts is the room space. So, this we call as Ishvara. We can realize God as the transcendental reality, Brahman, the Vishwarupa, the immanent aspect, the Ishvara, the Lord of the universe, and Antaryamin, the indweller in all the jivas. 
especially mani manifesting the all jivas as the indweller. He is experiencing all that you experience simultaneously being the indweller. So this aspect also you can realize God as the indweller in all beings as the antaryamin and as the avatara. The God has incarnated, he has the absolute has appeared inside the relative existence for the sake of jivas, for the sake of jivas to make them move in a particular way, live in a particular way that they can go back to the source again, the ocean of existence. So you, you can meditate in any of aspects of these transcendental, immanent, Ishvara, Yantaryamin and Avatara. So God can be real. This is all the way, possible ways that a man can realize God in any of these aspects. Take any religion, it's one part of this. Um, some may take God as the Father in the heaven or the Ishvara, the Lord of the universe. End, end with that. That is the understanding of God. So they can go beyond the universe into the absolute existence. Uh, they can take the universe itself as, to limit itself to the universal level. Take nature as God, then you will see that there is one life and one srishti. Because you are not going beyond. If you go beyond, you will see, again it doesn't end with it. It begins to, it ends to begin again. Life ends to begin again till it reaches back the source. So this is what we see and Sri Ramakrishna wants these people to realize all aspects of God as much as they can. Know every aspect of God, every way that he is presenting himself to the jivas according to their nature, according to their karmic load, according to their tendencies they have created. According, in the same, because forces are acting on that. What is my nature? To according to nature, I observe that. Even the world, I see the world according to my nature. I don't know what this universe is. I see a person in a particular way, particular aspect of his. I cannot know what a person is. Another person is seeing another view of the same person. Each thing we observe, each the world, aspect of the world, each atom of this world, we all observe, every object in this world, we all observe in different ways. We are seeing entirely different world. One person, what the world he sees, is entirely unrelated as if with, to the other person, view of the other person. So when we sleep, we take this version and dissolve. It dissolves in us. The universe that I was seeing, in this, which is superimposed on this, really universe which is God, is withdrawn and he sleeps with that. I sleep with the world that I am seeing and it goes on changing. I as I go on evolving, my understanding of this world, understanding of myself and understanding of this universe, Jiva, Jagat and Ishvara goes on changing as I evolve and finally I see they are all one reality. There were never three. Jiva, Jagat and Ishvara are one. Because I am identifying with body, it was looking the multiple three. When my identification with body falls off, I put back the part that I have identified into the whole and view it independent of my bodily existence. I see there is one homogeneous existence of love, bliss, peace, absolute. The Satchidananda, existence, consciousness, bliss, absolute. This is what we experience 
when our body awareness goes off. This is the real reality. Till we reach the reality what this world is, we'll be seeing a world of our own, which is constantly changing according to our experiences. When, when, when we were small children, our view of this world was entirely different. As we were growing, it is entirely different. After we realize God, it is all divine. The materialistic aspect completely disappears. And one God pervading everything into the eternity, it is moving. Mm. So, Sri Ramakrishna wants these people to realize this truth which is the essence of all religions. When we, you, any religion, essence is this. Uh, but it has taken different forms. Entirely different from each other. It looks in the surface. As you dive within and go to the bottom surface, you will see an entirely different thing. So I asked, now, he doesn't leave at that level, go and meditate. He wants something more. What is it he wants something more? He wants them to know how to meditate. What is the way we meditate? Now he is going there. About half past ten, Narendra and his Brahmo friends were meditating in the Panchavati. After a while, Sri Ramakrishna came to them. M2 was present. Master says, Sri Ramakrishna has gone there to see how they meditate, what they meditate. Many times, when a person is used to sit for meditation, Sri Ramakrishna would go and sit close to him and watch him from all directions. How is he sitting? What is his awareness? What is shining within him? What, how is his mind? What his mind is thinking? Is mind dissolved or not? What is the status? Every bit he will analyze. Even the posture in which a person is sitting, you will understand his entire nature in that. Is he able to meditate with that form or not? Our posture decides how much and what I can realize. It limits many of the postures limits. One of the important part of the meditation, the yogic meditation I mean, in Advaita and all, you can sit in any way. It doesn't matter. But in case of yogic way of sitting, Sukham Sthiram Asanam, that sitting is a beautiful thing. That once you sit in a particular asana, you don't need to move about. Even if days pass, you'll be in a comfortable sukham, sthira. The same sukha and some same sthira, it will be even after many days of sitting. So, I, when I was in Himalayas, I saw a few people sitting for more than 24 hours at a stretch. There were some who could sit for two days, three days at a stretch and there were a few who could sit still longer for ten days, five days at a stretch and get up. No food, no water, they are in meditation. Mm, just like deep sleep, uh, there will be, it is not something possible even to control the hunger and thirst, uh, even to sleep it is not possible. Um, these uh, bamboo flowers, when bam bamboo flowers, that is the last end of the, its life, bamboo flowers and it will be leaving paddy behind, is exactly resembles the paddy and then the, from that paddy they take out rice. This rice a, tea, a tablespoon of rice they boil and make it ganji, porridge, 
and drink it. They don't need to have food at least for 10 days. They will not feel hungry or thirsty. Just they will take those who sit, want to sit for a long time. The water retention capacity, the all the flow, what we call pranas in the body movements, pranic movements, all these, all actions of the nature, digestive system, heart pumping, all systems, nervous system, respiratory system, all will be working in its own way, calmly, without disturbing. And he can concentrate on the object and slowly move about in the world of spirit. Spiritual world is there, just like physical world. We are in the cross physical world at waking state. We pass through waking, dreaming and deep, deep sleep. Jagrat, Swapna, Sushupti. It is contraction of consciousness to zero and expanding from within. It is in case of dhyana, we enter into super conscious state by expanding. We go, we turn inward and die with an expanding ourselves. In sleep, we contract ourselves to zero and then expand from the individual consciousness to the cosmic consciousness. Here it we, as we begin our journey inward, we start expanding. When we reach the Manomaya Kosha, we are expanded so much and our wisdom, knowledge and awakening, the awakening is so much, you are able to perceive what is mind practically and then you penetrate through that into the Vijnana Maya. When you first you will have the vision of the Chaitanya, what is the consciousness? What, what is meant by conscious Chaitanya? We hear, but we have not seen. Shruyate, Nachadrishyate. We hear so many things, like blind man hearing the light and colors. He utters also. He doesn't know what it is. Like that is our state. When we enter into Vijnana Kosha, we see entirely a new dimension which we can never experience by living in this world thousands of years also. This is limited by time and space. That is not limited by time and space. It is world of spirit. This is world of matter. This is a puny thing that is infinite and eternal. So, Sri Ramakrishna wants them to Meditate properly to reach that transcendental aspect. <clears throat> the master said to the Brahmo devotees, in meditation, one must be absorbed in God. By merely floating on the surface of the water, can you reach the gems lying at the bottom of the sea? An important instruction. What we do when we sit for meditation, we get the initiation from Guru. Guru asks you to sit and visualize the eight petal lotus, red lotus in the heart and on which your Ishtadevata is sitting, be it Sri Ram Krishna or Rama or Krishna or whatever it is on eight petal lotus. And we, how we imagine even there we find difficulty in visualizing within me, within, so it is not so easy to visualize God sitting within. I can imagine God sitting in front of me uh, externally. I can visualize, I can serve, I can imagine, I can feel, but to feel and visualize God sitting within me is rather difficult. I have to turn inward and dive within. 
this is very difficult to turn. We have never used our eyes and bodily existence except in dreams to move about independent of body. Uh, we move with body, we view with body, we view mind and senses outgoing, we are observing. We have seen forms, various forms at all times, but we can't see ourselves. We have never seen ourselves. I can see everybody's face, I can't see my face any time, except in perhaps in dream. Hmm. In mirror what I see is image of my face, never my face. The face cannot be seen. Similarly, it is very difficult because I have not seen myself. Uh, I can imagine myself sitting, I can look at my feet, I can look at my hand, but how am I sitting, what am I sitting, I can't see. I have to see myself, I have to project out and see myself and slowly enter within. So, to how to get absorbed in God? Uh, we usually get the instruction, concentrate. People will think meditation is concentration. No, it is not concentration. It is something more than concentration. It is absorption. Look at the children, give them a mobile and who can operate it and see whatever they want. The children will be so much absorbed in seeing. TV, how much absorption they are absorbed uh, in seeing that they get absorbed so much so people talking, vehicles coming and going, nothing will disturb them. Their whole attention is there, they get absorbed. Absorption is different from concentration. Absorption, we don't get involved. Concentration, we get involved. There is two aspects of absorption. One is as if I am playing in that. Uh, and a witness, a witness attitude is there in absorption. And in that witness attitude, the witness is missing. Witness attitude is there, witness participation is there, but witness doesn't know it is a witness in absorption. It has become one with the object of it has become one with the object of observation. TV, something is happening, I am seeing. I get absorbed means I am getting absorbed there in that. Uh, just like um, I have a sponge. Uh, the water is there. I put it in the water and take it out. It has absorbed the water. It has one become one with the object. Mm. The um, humidity removing small sachets will be there with the medicine. It absorbs the moisture, absorbs. Means it becomes one with the object. Do I become one with the object and lose my awareness of existence? Then I am absorbed in it. What is happening around? Who is calling me? How am I sitting? Nothing is known. I am only that is there, I am absorbed in it. I don't have a separate existence apart from this. But I know I am witnessing. Witness attitude is there. Witness, witness is alive, but one with it. Witness is alive, one with it. Afterwards, when he comes back, oh, I was seeing that, I, it happened, this happened, that happened. Uh, he is able to tell. There was a witness who did not project himself or made himself to be known and my whole being will become one with it. This is absorption. Concentration is I remain without getting absorbed but I focus on an entity and 
try to analyze or plan or discover, there is intention is different. In absorption, I get lost in concentration, I penetrate into the thing, I penetrate, I penetrate into nature, I penetrate how this cloth is made, uh, I am concentrating on, I am painting, something I am doing, I am fitting a thing, then I am concentrating on it. In concentration I remain what I am, but focus my intellect and mind in absorption. I do not focus my intellect and mind. I, in concentration, main part working is intellect and mind. It wants to penetrate and see or discover or plan and see the whole condition of it in concentration. Mind and important part is mind and intellect. In absorption, it is heart. Heart gets absorbed, intellect concentrates. So, concentration is a part when penetration is needed. Absorption is a different faculty or different uh, part of experience in which I get lost. Sri Ramakrishna wants get absorbed, not concentrate. The usual understanding of meditation is, I do not get concentration, I do not get concentration. Concentration is not needed. Once you get absorbed, how deep can you go within yourself? How deep you can go within yourself? That decides your concentration. Each absorption as much as you can dive within and forget yourself last, I cannot go beyond. To that extent when you start going beyond which you are reached a particular step, step by step you are going, climbing. In the next step to climb, we use concentration. Concentration and absorption goes alternatively in meditation. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Shri Ramakrishna Arpanamastu